Hello, this is Gio, and this is my new Bailey Future Spa pinball machine right here. Actually, the back glass is resting right here on my uh, older machine. But I did get this thing. It wasn't in perfect working order, and so I've been trying to fix it up. And one of the issues I have is with regards to the rectifying board, the power rectifier, which is right over here. So, for those of you who are not familiar with rectifier boards or rectifiers, what a rectifier board does in a pinball machine is it takes essentially current from your transformer, which is down here behind this case. Every all the power is off, so so I'm pretty safe uh, touching it. But the transformer takes uh, the current directly from your outlet, and then it kind of uh, transforms it into either higher or lower voltages and then the current goes to your rectifier here and what your rectifier does is it, it either keeps it as AC current which came from your your transformer or it converts it to a DC current and it also splits up the voltages or it makes a variety of voltages voltages it uh, can bring it you know give you 5 volts 7.5 volts 12.5 volts etc so that's what the rectifier board does. It takes your current essentially from your transformer and uh, converts it, e either keeps it into AC or converts it to DC and then, uh, and then uh, uh, changes its voltages so you could use it in the, rest of the in the rest of the machine. So that's what the rectifier board does and I've already taken out a bunch of plugs, the pin connectors. You can see the pin connectors here. Um, and these little, um, or the pins here, and these connectors went into here, and this is where the power would go to the rest of the board. But I've already taken this off, and I will remove this to show you what my problem is. So just to take this off, I have to take out a couple of screws that hold a, a little metal plate on the back of it in place. Uh, you'll probably hear it fall off after I take these screws out. Essentially, it's a cooling plate that attaches it to the metal backing, and it helps the board cool, especially at, at the, the rectifiers themselves. And then I have to take these little pins off. I already took the screws off the board as well, so let's see if I can get this off. And there you go, that's the backing plate, and it just was held by those screws. And I take this off very carefully and it's attached, soldered to the transformer so I can't exactly remove it but I'll show you what I'm looking at. The back of this thing is a mass of wires and the last person who had it did a ton of work over here. I'm not sure if you could see this. Really bad solder jobs. I mean there's some uh, burning, uh, some melted wires, etc. And so this has been causing me um, some power issue problems. So I want to resolve that and just inspecting that really, I, I don't really feel like I can fix that really appropriately. So I went ahead and bought a new rectifier board. And here's my new board, nice and shiny, everything's on it. Now when I went ahead and ordered this, I still want to do my research. Now this is a uh, Future Spa. Uh, pinball machine from Bailey 1979 and so I wanted to get a rectifier board as close to it as compatible so I didn't have to do a lot of uh, wiring myself so you could see the brand new solder on the back and so I did do my research I went online and tried to find a, a replacement board specifically for the Bailey Future Spa or compatible with the Future Spa and I did find a couple of different uh, versions actually I found a bunch of them on like eBay um, and Craigslist but the problem with getting them there is not that you might might not get good boards a lot of them don't come with the schematics and this is uh, the schematics that came with this particular board now I was looking at two different types of boards and this is the schematics to the other board I was looking at and they're very similar and here are the original schematics of my pinball machine so um, it's kind of a double page here I printed it out but what I want to do is look at these schematics really closely and make sure that they match as best I could 
um, with with the new with the new um, with the new board. Now the other the other schematics, everything was pretty much identical, except the voltages were slightly different, just a little bit voltage difference. This particular board had uh, the voltage output exactly like uh, the original Future Spa, so I went ahead and bought that. So before you buy a, tr uh, a rectifier board, do your homework because every bit of power that your machine uses comes from this board. And if this board doesn't work either because of voltage issues or surges, it could blow out a lot of your other components. So make sure you get this one right. Now one thing about these rectifier boards, unlike a lot of the other boards in your pinball, is other than the, um, the pin connectors in front that connect uh, the rectifier to all the other components, there's a ton of wires that aren't pinned. They're actually just soldered on. They come directly from your transformer and are soldered onto the back of your board. So it's not something you could just pull out. You have to do some desoldering. And um, and that was one of the things I was concerned about. Now the back of these boards, if you look at them, are significantly different. Now, okay, so you have all these wires here. Well, where are they going to go on the new board? Well, fortunately, the original <coughs> the original board sort of wired these up in certain locations, and I'm not sure if you could see this. Um, there's a bunch of little uh, spots here. Let me see if I can zoom in. Okay, so I still don't know if you could see this, but you can see little points here. This one says E10. This one over here says E12. Um, let's see if I can find any more. There's a bunch of little spots here. It's E8. Um, and these are the points that are wired to the back of your board. Now the new board also has E points. So this is E9, E5, E E11, 3, here's an E1 up here, the E4 is way up here, etc. So basically these correspond, these E points correspond to the uh, E points on the original board and when I was looking at the schematics um, that's one of the things I looked for. If you look uh, right here you see these E, uh, e, e locations, so that's E1, E2, E3 and this, uh, the original set as well, uh, you see E1, E2. So that helps you out knowing where to wire your, your board. Okay, so knowing that each one of these wires correspond to an E, e number, I'm going to take some tape, a pen, and uh, mark each one of these wires according to its E code. So it's already getting kind of crowded with labels, so after I label these, I'm just going to take my snippers and kind of snip them off nice and clean and then uh, re-strip them. Okay, all the wires are snipped. All, they're all labeled 1 through 12. The old board is all taken care of. Now I did have a little bit of trouble identifying some of the old numbers because there's a bunch of solder that's blocking a lot of these numbers. So uh, I either had to would have had to desolder some of this to expose those um, those numbers, or I just sort of mapped it based on the fuse location and uh, looking at my schematic here. So, but it all worked out. I have all 12 e, e numbers. Next step. Okay, so I went ahead and stripped them all, so they're all ready for soldering into the new board. But before I get to soldering, I just wanted to show you one last thing. So I have all these wires, 12 of them, actually a few more because they're kind of doubled up in a couple of cases. But you turn around, you flip the board over, you do see these two other wires that I have not removed. Now these are just jumpers, um, and basically there's a five, a jumper to a five to eight pin, I think on uh, plug one, and then there's a uh, jumper from seven to or six to um, I think I think that's an eight on uh, or I'm not quite sure which pin that is but these are basically jumpers and I, I, I mapped this in the schematics and realized that this board that was put in here didn't 100 percent match the um, the the future spa specifications and so uh, 
this individual had to actually do some jumpers to make the schematics work. Now this is very common and for many machines uh, you can't buy a direct compatible board and so you might have to do a couple of these jumps and so you'll have to look at these schematics very carefully to see where you put these jumps but um, I've already traced out this board and I should I don't believe I need any jumps at all and so I should just wire them to each E location without any jumps Okay, so I'm done soldering. I'm not the best solderer in the world, but I think I did okay. I tugged on each wire. It's good. I counted all the way from E1 to E12, and they all are connected. And so I will go ahead and, uh, again, I'll verify that the numbers are in the right location and then take the tape off. Now I did take some zip ties off, so I'm going to just go ahead and make all these wires neater and get them out of the way. Okay, I did my best to get the wires out of the way, and I gotta watch out where the holes are gonna plug. I don't want the wires in the way of that, and so I'm just gonna very carefully make sure all the holes match. And push the board in. Okay, so I went ahead and plugged in the pin connector cables, uh, plugs. Uh, now, this is a little different than the old board. I don't need this heat sink behind it because the rectifiers are pretty, they're out front and they kind of uh, give themselves enough ventilation. So, but what I did do is I did unplug everything, all my other boards, because I don't want any power going to those other boards just in case there's a surge. But I am going to test this out and hopefully it won't explode on me. We'll see what we get. Okay, if things plugged in. Let's see if it explodes. Oh, I do got some light, so it's not completely unplugged, but the boards are. But uh, now next I'm just gonna use my uh, digital multimeter to test those little test points and see if they test that okay. Okay, here's the moment of truth. I plugged everything back in, and let's see if things work. Ah, the board's booting up. And it works! Still don't have sound, and that's the last thing I have to fix, but... Everything seems like it worked. Lovely. Now just get some sound in here and I am set. See you next time. Bye-bye.